ChatGPT and other AI chatbots are quickly becoming valuable tools, and it's no surprise that they're finding their way in the retro community. I'm sure you've seen videos where people would go to artificial intelligence and say, hey, write me a program in BASIC that does this, and after a few iterations, you get a pretty polished program. But how neat would it be if we can communicate with ChatGPT on retro devices like you see behind me? Stay tuned, and I'll show you how. Now we've seen Retro Campus before in this channel, and this is definitely not gonna be the last time you see it. It's my favorite modern BBS, and I say that because you can look at news that is happening right now. It's all relayed so you can get modern news sources from websites you're probably using on your modern computer on your old equipment. Now, this is great. And it's wonderful we can use this, but one of my favorite things about Retro Campus is how easy it is to access it on a browser. So for the rest of this video, we're actually gonna switch over to a modern machine and modern screen capture so you can see exactly how this looks in real time on your browser. All right, so here we are at Retro Campus, bbs.retrocampus.com in your browser. It's just like it is on your Commodore 64 or other vintage machine. It's just faster. So you can see here the layout. Uh, we get a lot of options. Uh, this is an Italian build, so you have news in Italian, but it's also catering to the English-speaking world. So we have a lot of news there, mostly USA news sites. We got games, we got files, we got chat, which we're going to talk about later on. You can do messages on here. There is a browser as well as Eliza, which is MIT's, you want to call it a chat bot back in the day. Really interesting program. Uh, and of course, number nine, chat GPT. And we're going to check that out right now. Now to access the chat GPT specific part of Retro Campus BPS, you do have to be a Patreon supporter. You type in your email and then it emails you a verification code. So that's actually really cool when you're using that on vintage hardware that you then get a access code in your email. And after that, you're in ChatGPT. This isn't just a graphic interface, it's a pass-through. You would type in your request, your question, whatever you want to ChatGPT, and then that sends it off to a middleman, if you will, and that modern system is interacting with ChatGPT, and then it spits back the answer. It's about the same speed as if you did ChatGPT in your browser, but you're using your retro machine. So, for example, I'd be having this on my Commodore 64 with my Wi-Fi modem, and you have a very old vintage machine talking with modern AI in 2023. It's a really surreal experience. So I did reach out to the creator of Retro Campus, Francesco, and uh, he did confirm that this is a pastor. So your vintage machine is talking to one of his machines, and that in itself is talking to ChatGPT. It does use an API created by OpenAI that's well documented, and I'll have a link below for that if you're interested. He does have to convert Petsky over to ASCII and vice versa again, just to make sure that you know things are encoded correctly. Now, because this is used using his personal key with uh, ChatGPT, all the conversations are logged. And partially that's why you have to be a Patreon supporter. So we are supporting him financially, but he knows that all the conversations that I do are linked to my account. And because that's ultimately his ChatGPT login that we're using for this. So uh, if you are a subscriber and you choose to use ChatGPT on Retro Campus, keep it professional. So we're going to do one last request for ChatGPT here, and we're going to ask it to create a program in BASIC for the Commodore 64 to generate some random shapes. Uh, and we're not going to go back and forth because, in my experience, rarely has ChatGPT been able to produce a perfect BASIC program the first time, uh, but sometimes it does. And on a side note, if you're trying to learn basic, this is a really great tool. If you don't have anybody accessible that knows basic, uh, you know, you can print out a, a sample program like this, you can type it in, and then kind of 
collaborate back and forth on things that need to be improved. Uh, it's a really great way to learn. And I think that's where AI is going to really make the most impact is learning. So let's pop over to the real Commodore 64 and see if this program works. So here I am typing it into the Commodore 64. In the left-hand corner, you see my uh, my T495, my daily driver. I actually have a screenshot of the basic program that ChatGPT spit out, and that's how I'm typing it in. Of course, if you did this on a C64 or another vintage machine on Retro Campus, you really wouldn't have a way to copy and paste that code. You would have to hand jam it in somehow. And whether you take a screenshot or a picture with your phone, you got to capture that readout somehow to transfer it over to your vintage machine. And unsurprisingly, it didn't work the first time around. I'll keep this up for a little bit on the screen. If you want to pause it and write it down, troubleshoot it yourself, go right ahead. Uh, but for the this video, we're not going to be troubleshooting it. You, you get the image. Anytime you ask ChatGPT for some basic code or any other program, uh, rarely does it work. The first time, you have to have a couple back and forth iterations until it does exactly what you want. You know, when I first found uh, Retro Campus PBS, I was actually at home quarantining for COVID and doing some work from home. And it was a really great novelty to be able to read the news that I would have read anyway on my Commodore 64 or any vintage machine that you can connect to the BBS. And that's what I really used it for in the beginning was just news. I enjoyed it. It was uh, it was something new and, and fresh, you know, uh, but it's a lot more than just news. Uh, as we've seen for ChatGTP, which is a really great tool, and I think it just shows the amazing ability and the love, frankly, that Francesco put in to this BBS. Uh, I do think that Retro Campus is one of the most refined modern BBSs. You could do a lot with it, and we're gonna look at a little bit of this. So when you get to the home screen, you see we have news in Italian or in English. Um, Francesco does say that we're gonna have more US news sources coming. Now, yeah, I emailed Francesco, but a lot of what I gained for this, info is for this video was talking to him through here, through the chat feature in Retro Campus. So you can sign in with your username and start chatting with people. Maybe you'll be lucky enough and chat to Francesco and tell him how you found, found his BBS by watching my video or just talk to some other people that are using this. The last thing I wanna show you is Eliza. That's option eight on here. So ELIZA was developed by MIT Artificial Intelligence Laboratory in the mid 60s, 64, 65. Uh, and it was designed to simulate a conversation between a human, the user, uh, and a therapist uh, using pattern matching techniques. So it would look at some of your words that you use and then pull out, you know, maybe you're talking about your brother or your dad and it would turn around and say, oh, well, tell me about your family, because it matches certain words to have a convincible user output. Um, it does seem very simplistic, even if you compare it to like Smarter Child or other AOL chatbots, but this was really the first iteration uh, of chatbots, and I think a lot of what we've seen through the 90s, early 2000s, especially with AI and ChatGPT, uh, we need to look back and thank MIT's research for it. That was really the bedrock to where we're at now. There is a section on the BBS for the gallery, and you can see different images are up, but I want to end with the sponsor's Patreon logos. So, like I said, if you want to access ChatGPT, you need to be a Patreon supporter. If you go to a higher tier, not only do you get access, but Francesco will remake your logo and post it up on the BBS for everyone to see. It's a really great little feature, and I think it really builds into the community. Uh, I said it before, and I'll say it again, but I want to thank Francesco. This is an absolute amazing BBS. Uh, in my opinion, I think it's one of the best ones out there right now. Uh, please check it out. You can either check it out on the browser or on a vintage machine. Of course, I'll have all these links below in the description. 
Um, no reason not to check it out. You can click on the link for your browser and go there right now. Of course, it'll work with any vintage machine that can access the internet. I like using it on my Commodore 64 and it really makes you think. Are you keeping up with the Commodore? Because the Commodore's keeping 